Hey, what's up everyone? If you've regularly been doing your textbook exercises for Specialist Maths 3-4, you would have or you probably encountered this question right here in chapter 2, which is circular functions. Find the implied domain and range of cos sine inverse x given that the domain of cos is restricted to 0 to pi. So this is an unusual question, although it is very hard. That is why I'm doing a video on this. Right, so what's so hard about this question? Well, the problem here is you have a function, a composite function to be more specific, that is cos sine inverse. Right, we're supposed to find the implied domain and range, so implied domain and range of this graph. How do we do that? So with composite functions, whenever you see one, you have to always draw this table, which I just like to refer to the composite table. That means you have your f, your g, your two functions, then you got your domain and you got your range. Right, so in this example, I'm going to say that f is the cost function, so the function on the outside, and g is the function on the inside. So f would be the cost x graph and g would be the sine inverse graph. Right, so I'm just going to draw my table here. Remember, f is cos x and g is sine inverse and then we just replace sine inverse with x and you get this composite function right so what is the domain of f so domain of cos graph well we already been told that the domain is 0 to pi right but what about the range of our cos graph so range of cos graph you just draw your cos it looks like this and of course the period just ends at 2 pi the graph ends at 2 pi and if the domain is from 0 to pi pi is halfway obviously so our range would be from negative 1 to 1 so now we've got the domain and range for our cost graph so the f function now we need the g function the g function in this case well we know that the implied domain for a sine inverse graph is negative 1 to 1. Right, so just have a look, our sine inverse graph should always look like this. And the domain starts from negative 1, ends at 1. Our range starts at negative pi on 2, ends at pi on 2. Right, so our range is negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. So that's what our domain and range is for our cost graph, uh, for our sine inverse graph, which is g. Right, so step number two, after you draw your table, you have to look you have to look at the golden rule for composite functions. Right, so the golden rule for composite function is the range of the graph in the inside, so in this case the inside graph is g, the range of g, has to be a subset. A subset, another word is just belongs to or is within the domain of your f function. So in this case, the range of our g graph over here has to belong inside the domain of our f function, which is over here, 0 to pi. Right, so we just have a look. Does this composite function, cos sine inverse, follow the rule or not? We have negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, which is our range, 0 to pi, which is our domain for f. Well, obviously, the negatives in the range for g does not belong anywhere in our domain because our domain only takes from 0 to pi if you draw your number line 0 to pi 0 to pi but our range is negative pi on 2 to pi on 2 so this part right here does not belong in there so we our composite function does not exist so if it does not exist we have to restrict so that's very important. We have to restrict this range so that it fits inside the domain. Right. We're going to have to restrict range of g so that it fits inside. So restrict range of g so it fits inside domain of f. Okay, so now we're going to restrict it. How do you restrict negative pi on 2 and 
to pi on 2 so that it fits inside 0 to pi? Well, it's very simple. You just change it right here. So if I draw my table again, I want it to be 0 to pi. That means the way, the only way to restrict this would be I change a negative to a 0 and I just leave the pi on 2 by itself because pi on 2 is fine, it's absolutely fine. The only changes that I need is that negative pi on 2 over here and we're just changing it to 0 and that's it. Right, so right now when we change it from 0 to pi on 2 it does fit inside so now the golden rule is met with this um, step right here and what you have to do is you change this as well to 0 pi on 2 so that they're the same now. Okay, but that doesn't give us implied domain or range yet. Our implied domain and range are found in this box. That is the range and that's the implied domain. Okay, so how do we find the implied domain? So let's start with domain and then we'll find the implied range. Okay, so implied domain in this scenario, we have our sine inverse graph. It looks like this, just the same. Negative 1 to 1, pi on 2 to negative pi on 2. Now our range has been restricted from 0 to pi on 2. So 0 starts over here, range is the vertical values, so 0 to pi on 2. That means we take this part out. So I'm going to use a smaller eraser. Right, so we take that bottom part out and we only have the top part, 0 to pi on 2. So what is my domain for this specific range? Well, pretty obvious from our graph, 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, that gives our 0 to pi on 2 range. Good, so that's our implied domain. 0 to 1, that's implied domain. Implied domain, 0 to 1. Now we just need to find the implied range. So how do you find implied range? Well, Okay, our domain for our cost graph has now been restricted to 0 to pi on 2. So this has to always be the same as your range for g as well. So our cost graph would only look like this until... pi on 2, so... oops. So our cost... right. So our cost graph would look from usually... Oop, that's 2 pi, that's pi, and the intersection here is pi on 2. Right, we only want from 0 to pi on 2, that's our domain, 0 to pi on 2, so from here all the way to here. So that gives us the range of 0 to 1. Right, so 0 to 1, that's our range. From 0 to pi on 2, the lowest value is 0, the lowest y value is 0, the, lower, the highest y value is 1. Right, so that gives us our implied range which in this case is 0, 1. And there you have it. That's how you would have to solve this question. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. I'll see you next time.